So a group of people that I feel have been othered by the healthcare system or healthcare systems are obese patients. A bias that I have identified that I hold about this specific group is that they can just work out or just lose some weight. I realize that this point of view is incorrect and has the ability to damage this population of patients that I come into contact with um, within my own nursing practice. Studies show that the effects of stigma are both immediate and long. Felt stigma is a term used to describe the expe expectation of poor treatment based on past experiences of discrimination. A provider's attitude towards a patient has a direct effect has direct effects on their care. It can reduce the quality of the patient encounter, harms the patient's outcomes, and reduces uh, the patient's satisfaction. Some biases that I have witnessed in healthcare settings, in the uh, that goes uh, that goes against these other groups, are that they are lazy, undisciplined, and less likely to adhere to treatment slash self care recommendations. This is simply untrue. The cognitive process that I enjoyed the most in Cross Curry's article is in figure one. Um, they describe type one processes are fast, autonomous, and where we spend most of our time. And type two processes are slower, deliberate, and are rule-based and take place under conscious control in order to help prevent mistakes. It shows that biases that negatively affect judgments often type one processes can be can be overwritten by an explicit effort at reasoning type two processes can perform an executive override function which is very key to debunking and rewiring a person's unconscious biases or unconscious beliefs um, using type one processes uh, excessively using type one process except type one processes excessively can override type two processes that ultimately prevent reflection and lead to unexamined decisions being made. But not all biases originate in type one processing. Uh, but when biases do occur, it can only be dealt with by turning on type two processing. So repetitive type two processing may um, help build more aware slash unbiased type one processes because uh, a person is gonna have to be able to tap into uh, not only type two process, but type one processes when there a quick decision needs to be made. This shows you that a good, there needs to be a good balance of type one and type two processes in order to have a well-balanced performance as a healthcare provider. Um, if this cognitive process isn't used correctly, the patients have poorer outcomes, providers damage their patients mentally, um, physically and emotionally. Uh, obese patients do not experience equal care compared to indiv individuals not in this group. Uh, in a study, a patient suffering from obesity said, don't, uh, they don't tell you what diet to have, how to exercise, how to lose weight properly, or what foods to stay away from. They just tell you, lose weight. Patients suffering from other illnesses have an in-depth plan of care that aren't vague or dismissive. Um, so it, with this patient's comments about the, the care that she received, it, it's clear that she's not getting the same care as someone who um, needs uh, a specific plan of care in order to uh, have a, a, a a positive outcome that comes out of uh, specific interventions that need to be done in order to create that positive outcome. The individual patient and groups as a whole start to feel, these groups start to feel uh, excluded socially. This leads to the patient, uh, to the patient or patients in this other group to feel like they're, they're in a powerless position and this restricts their ability to, to survive. Patients with this mindset can make it can make it harder for a healthcare provider who actually cares about them and wants to speak life and wants to encourage them 
um, to overcome their health op obstacles a lot more difficult. Uh, the first step of patience making a change is believing that it's possible to do so and to believe that it's possible to maintain these changes when the patient is able to change. And so if a patient doesn't believe that they can change, it, it makes it a lot more uh, difficult for a healthcare provider to have them believe they can change and then start ma making the necessary uh, change, uh, help them start making the necessary changes to improve their lifestyle and to improve their health. Some ways healthcare settings can, can help this population is by giving an in-depth plan and strategy uh, of care, assessing facilitators and barriers to change, and plan how to make their health goals a reality slash how to maintain them throughout their lives. Some training that I would provide to physicians, APNs, and nurses to change their implicitly biased cognitive processes would be to spend time identifying their processes and biases. I would also assign education modules to describe different types of biases, uh, cognitive processes, and how to become aware of your own conscious mind slash thoughts. This will better equip the healthcare professionals at treating other groups with fair, high, uh, with fair, high quality care. From this perspective, healthcare professionals can highlight the individual's resilience, personal agency, uh, family support, and the unique ways through which this marginalized individual or a marginalized group um, can navigate and adapt to their environment. This will allow treatment to be specialized for the specific individual or specific group and helps treat uh, the specific root of the cause, not just its manifestation.